As some of you may know, music is a huge part of my life. I've always considered myself to be more of a music guy over like games and sports and anything else really. I often can relate to certain songs or certain albums. When thinking back on certain songs or albums, I'll relate to what was, what was going on in my life at the time. Just as a number of examples, my last two years of school I was listening to Gautier. He released his big album. Gorillaz had Plastic Beach. I'm not really sure when it was released, but I listened to Plastic Beach a lot. And then the Wombats released their second album. I also re-listened to Real Big Fish's album, why do they rock so hard? Listening to it in this time created like a new memory of it for me, a new sense of nostalgia, because I listened to the album a lot when I was a kid because my siblings had it and they would play it a lot. So it was kind of like when I was starting school, I listened to Real Big Fish and then when I ended school, I listened to Real Big Fish. Basically where I'm going with this is every year, there's an, at least one album that like defines that year for me. Most of the time, it's more than one album. There are some occasions where I'll go back to an old album or just discover a new album that came out a few years before, um, or like I get introduced to an artist that I've not heard of and listen to their stuff. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. 2016, I had three albums that year. Um, there was Glass Animals' How To Be A Human Being, Sticky Fingers' is West Away, and DD Numbo's Utopia Defeated, and all of the Strokes albums, because my friend was like, get him, and I was like, okay, and I listened to him, and they were real good. In 2015 was uh, the Woman's third album, Glitterbug, and Disclosure's Caracol. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's written down over here, and it was a cool album. In 2017, there's been quite a number of big albums for me. And that's basically what this following list is. I'm gonna talk about a few albums that I listened to and fell in love with this year. I just wanna state now, this, this is what I love this year. This is my list for what I will look back on 2017 and think about. I just wanna quickly mention that uh, three of the albums are Australian, uh, which I think is kinda, kinda cool, I guess. Obviously, me being in Australia, I'm more likely to be exposed to Australian music. Uh, which means that a lot of y'all international people may not have heard of these people. My goal here is to introduce people to new music that they may not have necessarily heard of before. I just want to have a few special mentions. I just want to quickly mention these bands or whatever because I liked their albums, but firstly, I'm not sure if they came out this year for some of them, um, slash listen to them this year. And secondly, uh, I like the albums, but I was just like done with it pretty quickly. And that goes for like all of these. The Weeknd's Starboy. I listened to that, I think it came out last year, 2016, but I think I listened to it more in 2017, but I could be wrong. I don't really know, I can't remember. I did see him a few nights ago as of recording this in Sydney. It was fucking cool, holy shit. Childish Gambino, his album, Awake My Love. It was one I listened to a bit, it was pretty cool, but I, I got done with it somewhat quickly. Passion Pit, those guys, slash that guy. Yeah, again, it was pretty cool. Um, from memory, it's pretty different to his other stuff. And then the last band, Everything Everything, they've got three albums here, Ark and Man Alive. Um, and then the latest album, Fever Dream, this guy right here. Um, all of them, I did enjoy the album as a whole. Um, I was done with them somewhat quickly, but they all did have song, like standout songs that I really fucking love. This album in particular came out this year, so the two songs, being their like two singles, I guess, are uh, Can't Do, and Desire. They're really cool songs. Holy shit, dude. They're top notch, right? So the first album on this list came out in 2013. Shit, dude. Shit, where is it? Where? Yeah. I only really got into these guys towards the end of 2016, thanks to Zach, who introduced them to me a while ago. Uh, at some point he sent me a link to the video of All Your Light, which is not from this album. Pretty much saying that the film clip was kind of fucked up. I remember liking the song, but I never really thought too much about it. But then, you know, occasionally it would kind of be in my head. Just that, hey, no, can save me. Uh, eventually I went back and listened to the song again. And I was like, yep, it's fucking cool. I'm going to invest in their music. I went to my, my local CD store and I couldn't find the album that All Your Light was from. But I did find this album, Evil Friends, and then I ended up buying the other album from iTunes. I don't really remember when I started listening to this album. I think I had it on my phone and listened to it a little bit, but then I got a new car towards the end of 2016, 
that actually had a CD player. So I put this CD in there and it was the first album that I had in my car for like a while. From memory, it was in my car until after PAX South, which was in January. So I guess it was the start of 2017. So it kind of counts, I guess. I don't really know. Anyway, it's on the list. The first track that I really loved from the album was a song, probably actually still my favorite song from the album is Modern Jesus. It's probably the thing that like got me hooked initially because you know, like you get stuck in your hand, man. I think Portugal the Man are pretty good at doing that with the songs. A few other standout songs are uh, there's Sea of Air. Um, I think I like the song for it's just like pretty simple to start with. It's just the man, the, the dude singing, and then, then kind of a guitar or whatever the fuck it is, and then and it's kind of a bit of a sing along moment of people being like multiple people singing, and then there's the suddenly the part where the band comes in like bam, real fucking loud. Man. I think the first time I listened. To it. Probably scared me. I think what I like about the album as a whole is the number of times that they'll like redo lyrics and riffs and stuff throughout different songs. They'll use the lyrics in similar yet like different ways to have that put together album feel like written here. I don't think I've really heard much of that before where a band or artist will throughout the album repeat lyrics gonna bring Undertale into this because I always fucking do. That's part of the reason why I love the Undertale soundtrack is because they use the same riff a lot throughout the entire game, throughout the entire soundtrack, yet every song had a different fucking emotion. So uh, the next album is The Gorillas is Humans. Not long after the release of it slash me getting and listening to it for a bit, I read a negative review on the album. Pretty much I got clickbaited and triggered real hard. The title of the thing was something along the lines of, um, the Gorillaz album is actually, uh, not actually, uh, that, uh, good. And I was like, no, nah, fuck you. I'm gonna read this and then tell you why it's good, you fucko. I disagree with all of this, this is fucking bullshit. And then basically from then on, I listened, when I was listening to the album, I thought about this guy who did this negative review and it like, spoiled it for me in a way because it would be like this song in particular is bad because of this reason and I'd like listen to that song I'm like no it's not bad because fuck you you don't understand there's a few standout songs I really like from the album but as an album I'm not really sure if it worked for me it felt like the songs didn't flow as I remember Plastic Beach flowing well it could have simply been I was overhyped for the album or it could have been that review I actually partly agreed with maybe that's why I felt so triggered by it I like the album I really do but I couldn't, there was something, there was something about it that it didn't quite do it for me. Uh, as for songs, I really liked Ascension. 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 It kind of set how the album was going to feel for the, for the most part. It gets you like hyped up for the next fucking 18 tracks. Satin Bars was the second song that released before the album came out. I do kind of remember liking it, listening to it for the first time, but then when Ab D Damon Albarn voice came in, that's when I was like, ooh, ooh. I've written here, I think, I'm still not sure, but I think I like the last half last half of the album best. I still think that I like the last half of the album best. Obviously there's a few tracks in the first half. Then to end off the whole album, we got We Got The Power. It's just, dude, that's upbeat as fuck. It gets you fucking like, yeah, I'm feeling all positive and shit. And you're like, whoa. I just want to quickly mention that there is a disc two on this CD I got. Um, I didn't really listen to it, it's like got six extra tracks, so I'm not going to talk about that, but know that I know that it's there. Looking at you, Matthew. And then, they also put out another random song, for some reason, called Sleeping Powder. It's not part of the album, but I want to mention it because it's Gorillaz, and it's a fucking cool song, I really like it. Opening track, that message, it's fucking good. I'm talking about Holy Holy's Paint. This is the first, first Australian um, band on this list. I really like tracks that just kind of start off kind of quiet and like, yeah, kind of neat. And then they kind of build up to be all big and like fucking in your face and shit. So it's got like a fucking sweet guitar solo and then it's like finishes quiet again. And you're like, 
cool. That's what that message is, I think. You know, the song, that message is kind of like that got... Whoa, why are you flashing? That message is that sort of layout of a song, I guess. Another example of this is Catfish and the Bottlemans 7. I've written here, coincidentally, is the opening track of their latest album. The song Darwinism was my first taste of the band Holy Holy. It played on the radio one day when I was driving to work. It's kind of similar in terms of layout of a song in that it kind of builds up, but the difference, main difference being it starts with more lines, I guess. Another thing that it's got is it has horns, it's got like trumpets or saxophones or something, and if you know me, I love a song with some trumpets in it, clapping down here. Trumpets. There are a few other standout songs I really like, such as Elevator, True Lovers, and Amateurs. It's kind of one of those songs, one of those albums where every song is just pretty solid and it all works together. It, it can kind of sound the same, at least uh, like the start to songs sound the same. I figure that's kind of the point of an album. You get a collection of songs that are similar and put them all together and they work as an album. Sometimes doing that doesn't work, but in this case, I believe it works for this album. So Holy Holy seem to be a pretty hipstery band by the looks of them. They're one of those bands that are actually just like two people who write all the songs, but obviously they need a whole band when they play live. Oh, the killers! Ooh. So I was pretty hyped for the new Killers album uh, called Wonderful Wonderful, which you got here. A while before they released the album, they released the song called The Man, which is a fucking banger, dude, holy shit. And I listened to it on the radio at some point when, I don't know if it was first like premiere on the radio, or if they just played it because they were interviewing Brandon Flowers, the singer of The Killers. Pretty much like with The Killers in general, it took me a little bit to get into the song. Uh, at first listen through, I did like it, but I didn't really think too much of it. But in saying that, I was, you know, like, excited for the first, for the new album. I had listened to their first two albums, Hot Fuss, or Fuzz, Hot Fuss, and Sam's Town. Um, at some point, like, earlier in the year or the year before, they're, like, fucking, like, Spicy Boys, both of them are Spicy Boys. I got the new album, Wonderful Wonderful. To me, I've written, I wrote this bit last night, but to me, it's just another Killers album. Now, I say this in like a negative way, but I'd say it's more positive. As I mentioned before, my experience with the Killers is their first two albums, Spicy Boys, Spicy Boys, as I mentioned before, Spicy Boys, where they're solid albums, fucking just good albums, and then there's a number of standout songs. Mr. Brightside, and basically, this album. Wonderful Wonderful is no real exception to this. It's a fucking solid album with a few standout songs that fucking get me pumped. The Man, Run For Cover, and then a few others that I can't name because I'm bad at remembering track names. But in saying this, I was like a little disappointed. It could have been me being kind of hyped for the album. I didn't listen through it once and go, fuck that was good, it was a fucking good album listen to it again, fuck that was good. It was more of a, uh, listen to it, I was like, oh, it's pretty good. These few tracks I really like, but overall it was pretty good. Like, it grew on me a lot, but I feel like it's gonna be one of those albums where those few tracks I fucking love, and then the rest I'll kind of forget about. Seeker. This here is the second Australian act in my list. They're called Boo Seeker, and the album is called Never Too Soon. When I bought this album, I only heard, I thought I only heard one song from it uh, called Turn Up Your Light, which is like their, I guess their single that they play on the radio a lot. I listened to the album, and basically it turns out I knew a few more. Basically my first listen through for the album, I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool album, whatever, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to it again because it's in my car. If I hadn't had it in my car, I may not have fucking liked it as much as I do. And that's why I put CDs in my car, because so I'm like forced to listen to them and come to appreciate them more. It's Bruce Seeker's debut album. I don't know, they fucking nailed it. They seem to make all the songs like flow together really well as an album. The track Argo Misty, for example, it's I've written here that the intro for that song is really cool. It's like, and it sounds like there's like Link yelling 
for some reason. Probably not, because Nintendo would like sue them, but it's fucking cool. I've written here, uh, they've also got a few chilled out songs, like Turn Up Your Light, which I mentioned before, in Brooklyn. And then a few more upbeat songs, like The Link One. Uh, a few standout tracks, like I've done with most of these albums, are... Uh, Does This Last, Argo Misty, Turn Up Your Light, and Calm. Symphony, which is the last song on the album. It's fucking cool, man. Hello, welcome to the end of this video. Um, the next part will be coming out, oh god, at, at some point soon. Uh, it exists, but this is part one, and part two will happen at some point real soon. It's like, it's like ready to go, but not quite, or something. I don't know, but anyway, uh, this is the end of the video. The, the rest is soon and is that 20 seconds yet I don't know I need my annotations or whatever okay bye